For some, it was Yoko Takahashi's vocals on Cruel Angel's thesis. Others were jazzed by Yoko Kano's displays in Cowboy Bebop. Others still were reeled in to do the impossible, see the invisible, row row, fight the power. Profound anime music experiences are everywhere, whether it was a piece that heightened the flood of emotions or something so grandiose you just couldn't ignore it. So for tonight's program, I present to you my path into the world of anime music and the journey that unfolded. Good evening and welcome to this episode of Anime Music on the Airs. I'm your host, Cesaro Particle. For the 10th episode of Anime Music on the Airs, I wanted to do something a little different. I wanted to talk through my love for anime music, how I got started, and the depths that I now find myself in. So when I first stepped foot into the world of anime, my first show was Martian Successor Nadesco, an anime that parodied many mecha conventions, conventions that I was still somehow able to get. It also came with a pretty good soundtrack, assuming that the opening song's English didn't really throw me off. With compositions by Takayuki Hattori, I found myself drawn into Nadesco's musical delights, especially in its orchestral version of its opening theme, an arrangement titled Nadesco Hashins. <laughs>
We started off tonight's broadcast with a piece from Martian successor Nadesco titled Nadesco Hoshinsu, which itself is an arrangement of the opening theme, You Get to Burning. The music is by Takayuki Hattori. As fun as Nadesco was, it was only a slight dip into the world of anime music. The anime that had me plunging in wasn't some space epic or some action-filled show. No, it was a harem anime. Back in 2001, when I was busy trying to apply to college, I happened upon a show titled Love Hina, and it really spoke to me at the time because its main character was doing his best to get into Japan's top college. That premise really resonated with me, and with that, I was drawn into its hijinks. The music was utterly superb, which isn't something you'll hear me say about most harem anime music. So next up, we'll listen to a piece from Love Hina, an instrumental track by composer Masaki Iwamoto titled Love Hina, Hinata In's Theme, where the optimism just flows effortlessly. You just heard Love Hina, Hinata In's theme, which features the theme for Love Hina's setting. The music is by Masaki Iwamoto, whose emotional music shows just how powerful of a role music can play, even in a harem anime. By then, I was ready to explore the medium further, and the titles that caught my attention included shows like Cowboy Bebop, Initial D, and my first introduction to composer Taka Iwasaki, Read or Die. But as thrilling as it was, it was a later work that really placed Taka Iwasaki on my radar. Though he's gone on to do anime such as Tengentapa Gurren Lagan and the dubstep beats of Gachaman Crowds, I'll remember him most fondly for the music he wrote to Kenshin Seisoen, which featured a lot of emotional orchestral delights. Of those, Heart of the Sunrise stood out for its optimism. So here is Heart of the Sunrise from the Roni Kenshin Seisoen OVA soundtrack, composed by Taku Iwasaki.
That volley of optimism you just heard comes from the Roroni Kenshin Seisohen OVA, a piece titled Heart of the Sunrise. For me, it's Taku Iwasaki's best work to date. After that, I hit a plateau in my anime fandom, where I discovered that no, not all shows were good, and so I fell out of anime for over a year, thinking that Love Hina was the apex of what the medium had to offer. I clearly wasn't looking hard enough. But it was through a college friend of mine that I was slowly reintroduced to the medium, with an explosive show that had such an impact that I finished it up in the span of two days. That show was Gunslinger Girl, with a story so exquisitely tragic that it's become one of my most cherished series. In Gunslinger Girl, the action was brilliantly choreographed and the animation was rock solid. But even more than the action, the music proved to be a revelation, as composer Toshihiko Sahashi unleashed some of his best violin and piano works ever. No track captured the hopeless situation that the characters found themselves in more than the main theme, titled Tema 1. So up next we have Tema 1 from Gunslinger Girl, composed by Toshihiko Sahashi.
The show that pulled me back from my anime slump was the melancholy gunslinger girl. You just heard one of my most favorite tracks from the anime, Tema 1, composed by Toshihiko Sahashi. And my return to the anime fandom couldn't have been better timed. 2003 would be a banner year for a lot of great anime, including the first iteration of Full Metal Alchemist. The anime was already compelling, but what made it even better was the music by Michiru Oshima. Her best piece for Full Metal Alchemist was Brachita, our next piece, which really hits a sense of tragedy that's on display in Full Metal Alchemist. That was the one and only heart-wrenching Brachita, a piece that captures the tragedy that starts the story for Full Metal Alchemist. The piece is composed by none other than Michiru Oshima. 
2004 would keep on rolling in with great anime and great music. You had Beck, you had Elfin Lead, and you had Samurai Champloo, an anime that was about as different as they come. And that includes the ending theme, Shiki no Uta, which was the first R&B song I've heard in anime. It's really surprised me with its heartfelt delivery, and it continues to stick around my playlist. So here it is, the ending theme to Samurai Champloo, titled Shiki no Uta, performed by Minmi and arranged by Nujabes. Okay. 
You just heard Shiki no Uta, performed by Minmi and arranged by Nujaves. The song served as the ending theme to Samurai Champloo. 2005 came by and with it a list of solid anime soundtracks, but the most unusual one, because of its composers, comes to us in the form of Blood Plus. It's rare to know that the music for an anime is done by the same people who worked on soundtracks to films like the Speed Movies, Con Air, Tarzan, and Gladiator. And it shows in the Blood Plus soundtrack which features many a thrilling piece. Perhaps the most thrilling being our next piece, Blood Plus The Final Battle, composed by Mark Mancina and produced by Hans Zimmer. The final showdown from Blood Plus features the appropriately titled Blood Plus The Final Battle, a track composed by Mark Mancina and produced by Hans Zimmer. But even more than that, that year also brought with it some of the most earwormy opening themes ever. Although its premise is about mecha pilots whose ability to fight is forged through hormonal surges, its opening theme, So Say No Aquarion, grabbed me right from the get-go. With a stirring performance by Akino, with music by Yoko Kano, 
So Say No Aquarion is brilliant. So here it is, So Say No Aquarion, from the anime, Genesis of Aquarion. That chorus is one of those things that'll stick with me. 
That was Sose no Aquarion from the anime Genesis of Aquarion. The song was composed by Yoko Kano and performed by Akino. And as we come to the close of my pre-anime instrumentality days, we'll touch upon the last few shows that I saw in college, which incidentally was also during the year the Haruhi Suzumiya craze came in full force. Although its catchy ending theme, Hare Hare Yukai, would captivate audiences with its choreography, my major music influences belong to shows like Bartender, which transports you into its laid-back jazz club vibe where you can relax, refresh, and rejuvenate from the stresses of everyday life. With compositions by Natural High's composer Kaoruko Otake, the Bartender soundtrack is rich in emotion and timeless as a result. An example of that can be heard in our next selection, the sublime Cinderella Kitaikan from Bartender. The soaring violin and poignant piano comes through in Cinderella Kitaikan from the Bartender soundtrack. The music is composed by Kaoruko Otake. With such beauty comes a hopeful ending, one made all the more relevant in light of the post-college jitters. While that didn't put an end to my bouts of soul-searching, it did mark the end of one journey and the beginning of another. For that, the piece that spoke to me most came from Honey and Clover an anime that nails down those tumultuous times to a T. So to close out this episode of Anime Music on the Airs, here's the ending theme to Honey and Clover, a piece titled Waltz, where Suneo Air's performances touches on the past while also peers on towards the future.
Closing out tonight's program is Waltz from Honey and Clover. The song is performed by Suneo Air. As J.R. Tolkien always said, the roads go ever, ever on, and so my anime music journey continues. Stay tuned to part two of my anime music journey, the one that takes place after anime instrumentality comes into being. Until then, we hope you enjoyed this latest episode of the Anime Instrumentality Radio Show, Anime Music on the Airs. Feel free to leave comments below to let us know what you think and make requests for future shows. I hope you'll join us next time. Until then, I'm your host, Cicero Particle. Have a great evening. <laughs>